Hey everybody, welcome to another riveting episode of Friends of the Feather. We are here with our friends, the Button Quails, also known as the Buttons. I do believe this is episode 14. Thank you to all 119 subscribers, I do so greatly appreciate it. Um, if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you do so. Stick around, see what we're all about. If you decide to dislike this video, please explain why. <laughs> Just, I don't understand. Like, is it something I said? Is it the content? Is it, is it my, my, my grit, my, like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. What is it? I, uh, it, it just, uh, it, the whole thing just fascinates me. Anyway, so today I decided to put some enrichment materials in with the quails. And, uh, this is their old hut. I don't know if you recall, if you go back to episode one or two, I put the hut in, it was probably episode two or three actually, I put this little basket in upside down and put a toilet paper roll under it to prop it up so they could have a little hut because quails like to have places to hide out. Well, that is the hut and when I first put it in there, they were getting their heads stuck in it. I don't know if you remember that, but like the little holes on the side right here, they would stick their heads in there and get get their heads stuck. So that's how much they've grown in just like three weeks time. Because I don't think they could fit their heads through there now. But yeah, they're, and they wouldn't fit through a toilet paper roll now either, I don't think. But maybe barely, but I don't think they would do it. Um, but I just plucked some grass because as you see, my grass is gone to seed. And, uh, and I'm going to mow it today because we're leaving tomorrow. And uh, I was h trying to hold out until the last day. And it's going to be, uh, I'm probably going to have to mow it twice. But uh, they were terrified of the grass, of course, when I first put it in there. And uh, now they're starting to, to pull it out piece by piece. And they're I think they're eating the, the seeds off of it. But they're starting to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Being the smallest quail in the world, um, I can see that it's difficult for them to uh, unprogram themselves from their instincts of being terrified of everything, which I get. That's, I mean, that's how they've survived, is by fear. <laughs> fear and quickness, because they are quick, and they're slippery little devils. I was just telling upper management I left explicit notes for the uh, for the caretakers that are going to be taking care of these guys while we're gone that uh, they will fly out and they are very they're just slippery because they're not as they're not as big as they look the they're that's mostly poof that's not bird it's poof so their feathers are very fluffy and so when you start to pick them up because they're so small you're already trying to be careful right and then you don't really know how much pressure to apply to make sure that you don't smash them so you just gingerly pick them up and then they scurry out of your hands it's very much like a fluffy mouse like it would be like if a mouse had feathers that's what it would be like trying to catch these guys because you, you don't want to, well, I mean, a mouse you probably wouldn't mind smashing, but not in your bare hands. Come on. And then, uh, yeah, and then they're very fast. And they're very small, so you can't take your eyes off of them for a second or you'll lose them. I worry about air conditioning vents. I worry about cracks around the doors <laughs> because they're so tiny. And we were going to move them out to our wood shop, and I was like, oh, my God. I can't imagine trying to find them if they got out in there. So, because they're starting to, uh, they're starting to get a little dusty, as birds will be. So, I'm not really too hip to them staying in here, but until we get back and get their permanent structure built, I think that's just the way it's going to be. They're going to be chilling in here. Um, so, yeah. Honestly, this is probably going to be what I'm most worried about while we're gone is one of these guys getting out and because it's really easy to not think about putting the dog out 
and Callie is very stealthy. <laughs> So she could be laying under the table and you wouldn't even really think about it because she's so quiet. And uh, open it and one flutters out right down in her face. I could see that happening. I mean, I can just, it's playing like a movie in my head right now. So uh, I, uh, I don't want that to happen. I think you're a boy, Mr. Nesting in the, in the food. Yeah, I came in this morning. One of the reasons that I got this this basket it's a little bigger than I want I'm probably going to get something different I'm gonna to try to find a different container but um they when I came in this morning I woke up at some stupid hour this morning it was just ridiculous I don't know why I, I stayed up until 10 o'clock last night I mean I know that's way past my 9 p.m. bedtime but um, I got stuck watching this stupid show. Okay, so I have this this like guilty pleasure, which is watching the really dumb dating shows. Like, um, oh God, what was the, what are the ones that I watch? Like uh, Married at First Sight, like that. And I think the reason I've, I've examined this about myself because I don't really do reality TV. Look at that baby with that piece of grass sticking out of its mouth. Okay, anyway, I don't really do reality TV shows, but for some reason I get sucked into those so bad. And I think it's just human behavior. I think, I know that it's scripted. I know it's edited. I know it's cut up like, you know, like a, a poorly sliced apple pie, but um, I mean, I think some of the behaviors that those people exhibit are, like, real. And it's not necessarily what they say, it's it's what they do. It's the, the way they act towards other people. It's just fascinating to me. So I got stuck watching one of these on Paramount. And so I was up until 10 o'clock, and I was like, oh man, I'm going to sleep in until like 8, you know, 7, 8. And so, no, boing, I was awake. It was before five because when I actually got up to look at a clock, it was 5.15, I think, and I'd been laying there for some time. So I uh, came in here right after I got up, and there were two of these little babies nesting in their food bowl, and I felt so bad. I was like, "Oh, poor babies. They don't have anywhere to nest but in their food. And so... <laughs> I was like, well, I'll uh, I'll get the, the their old hut, right? Because it was not being used for anything else. And I didn't want to put it in there with just like the basket, nothing else. So I put some grass in there. And then I was thinking, you know, they'll probably like the grass. And as I had, as I had imagined, they do like the grass. And I got them a little water pallet because the little I had it on a little piece of wood that was probably like five eighths inch thick and it wasn't working out they were still get it I had to clean out their water like twice a day especially because I had dirt in their other enclosure not good not good the dirt in the enclosure was I mean I don't know if they were carrying it up with their feet because they would walk in the water a lot or if it was if they were like purposefully putting dirt in the water but it would just turn into like a little mud sundae like it was just dirt full dirt so um, it's not good for my garbage disposal it's very hard to clean it out because of the rocks so um, upper management had built this little pallet out of some scrap wood that he, he was just messing around one day and put it together for me as a drink coaster and I never used it as a drink coaster because I don't drink things that need coasters. So um, I decided to use it for their water and it's working out very nicely. This is day, yeah, I put it in here yesterday and it is still clean this morning and there's still water in it, so good stuff. And see, these are things we have to look for with the buttons because they fly, you guys. I'm terrified to open their cage. <laughs> I'm so afraid that they're going to get out. Transferring them was a nightmare. I think, what was it? We had four escape? <sighs> Shameful. Shameful quail mother. Just can't let them get out. Can't escape. Poor babies. But yeah, the fluffing is real.
They're getting so big. We're going to have eggs soon. I'm just thrilled that they're liking this grass. This might happen every day, quails, because this is going to dry it out real fast. So it's going to be shriveled and sad by tomorrow, probably by this evening. So enjoy it while you can, because I'm mowing her down tonight once it, once it dries out. And then I'll have cut grass to put in their little basket. That might actually work out better, but we'll see. All right, just wanted to see you guys to see that the buttons are alive and well. See what's going on with them. Check out their enrichment activities for today. I'm gonna have to throw some food in there. Look at the mess they make. They're so messy. Another thing for any wanting to venture into quaildom. They are very, very messy little critters. But they're so cute. Just look at them. Would you look at them? Just look at them. Aww. Y'all. They, they actually look a bit, uh, a bit haggard right now. Because their feathers are... Oh, gracious sakes. Got startled by something. I think it accidentally jumped in the basket. <laughs> God forbid. The basket is lava. All right, guys. Have a great day. Um, we might do uh, an evening episode. Who knows? Who knows what we're going to do? We're crazy critters around here. All right. Have a good one, guys.